And joining us now on the phone is Recode executive editor and co-founder Kara Swisher. Kara, it's always great to get your take. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Um, Thank you for having me. You know, Dan had brought up a, a, a very good point, an interesting one in terms of, you know, Facebook being, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but basically the devil spawn. From an investor standpoint, though, <laughs> maybe that doesn't matter for now, as long as advertisers, as long as users continue to use this platform. Do you think eventually that it catches up with either parts of those equation, uh, the equation? I think it always catches up. But right now, they can be as despicable as they want because their stock is up. And so they get this pass, this, this, this ability to say it's okay because of the, because of, because they really are the only game in town. And so they decided because there's a lot of uh, legislation coming, possible antitrust action, to sidle up for the, to the current government. I think there's a danger in that eventually. But I think, as Mark has seen throughout his his short corporate history that he can violate rules and get away with it. And so this is just the same, you know, this is, this is sort of a song that I keep singing and telling people and they're surprised that he does the same thing over and over again. But this is a pattern of Mark Zuckerberg from the earliest days. Um, he has complete control of his company. It's not Mark and his minions. It's just Mark. Um, and you know, he, if, he's not thinking of anything like what's the right thing for history. He doesn't, he has a, a passing knowledge of the First Amendment, from what I can, I've seen him speak about it, and I find it disturbingly naive. Um, but at the same time, he has, he's made his decision, and his decision is, is the rule of law at Facebook, and therefore that's what they're going to do. Um, do you think that the employee, the internal sort of revolt or the internal concerns that this is sparking, does this catch up to Facebook as a company in terms of attracting talent? Or does that problem largely um, dissipate over time as Facebook employs people across the country with its new work from home policy? You know, I don't know, because Facebook has been one, both Facebook employees have been among the most docile and uh, going along with this of any in Silicon Valley. There's always been a lot of hubbub inside Google almost continually, same thing at Twitter, same thing at a lot of the companies. This company, you hardly hear a peep from their, their employees in terms of these issues, uh, lots of issues, whatever something, uh, you know, comes up, that's so, social issues. Uh, so I, I, I'm surprised that even a few people have complained. I hope it continues. I think it will have exactly zero effect. Uh, I'm perplexed as, as, uh, that Sheryl Sandberg has said nothing, has been a non-voice here, a public voice, but I think they've decided to put um, Mark out front. I think he wants to be out front of this. Uh, they've tried with this content board, which, of course, would never decide things like this. It's only stuff uh, that has been uh, taken down there, not, not stuff that, sh uh, that should be taken down. So, you know, they've tried all kinds of things. I think they are going to do exactly what they're going to do. And this decision by Mark should come as no surprise to anybody. Kara, you're, it's always great having you on. Thanks for being here. So at Thanks. what point, if any, uh, is it incumbent upon the end user to make his or her own, own decision to uh, delete the app or to, to push back? You know, I understand what you're saying about Mark. I think it is what it is with Mr. Zuckerberg. But... The other side mm -hmm. of that equation is, you know, the people have the power at a certain point, no? Absolutely. That's exactly right. That's exactly, people can decide whether to use these products are good. You know, I know my own kids don't want to use it, and this is part of the reason. They're totally disappointed by these decisions. But, you know, my kids don't represent everybody. So some people find it really useful. Um, you know, Mark Zuckerberg is going to continue to be what I call them on Twitter, the Susan Collins of the Internet. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to be disappointed and concerned but he's going to do exactly nothing about this and continue to let uh, President Trump do what he wants. And I think you were right. You were all right in saying that there's no lose for, for the president because if he gets kicked off or sidelines, he can complain to his base. If he, if he doesn't, uh, if nothing happens, he wins. You know, it just, it just, it's, uh, it's a really a perplexing situation and something this company and other companies in social media should have faced a long time ago uh, Especially with with regards to President Trump, he's like a he's like a they gave sugar to him like a child they give sugar to him and they're w wondering why he's diabetic and screaming like guess what this is this is what you get when you allow someone to have unfettered access to your platform and have and be bound by no rules so again whatever side you're on about this this is exa we're he we're here because this is the way they made it if uh, Facebook loses out or if Facebook uh, loses some advertisers, whatever, if this whole issue catches up with that company, does Twitter mm -hmm. gain an edge? 
No, not necessarily. I mean, I think Twitter, it would be interesting if Twitter went to a subscription model. Professor Galloway on our Pivot program uh, talked about that. Like, they have nothing to lose. They're sort of the two big players in advertising are Facebook and Google, and they're carving it up for themselves, including against media companies, everybody else. So Twitter really is in a unique position. Would people pay for a subscription? Would they, you know, there's all kinds of things. So Twitter has, a, you know, that's why Twitter sort of cut off political advertising. It also it wasn't much of a lift, although I, I admire what they did. It wasn't much of a lift because it wasn't much of a business. Um, and advertising really isn't the point. Political advertising isn't really where the game is. It's in political content that, that gets thrown over this uh, over the over the whole place and a lot of it is disinformation that's allowed to thrive on platforms like facebook um so no i don't think they gain from it because they don't have the same product mm -hmm. facebook's kind of got a lock uh, on a lot of this stuff and i think they're angling not to not to be controlled in any way by the government right. and if this if this administration wins they certainly will reward facebook by leaving them out of what's going to be a uh, possible uh you know, a purge of these social media companies. Kara, thanks so much for joining us. We do appreciate it. All right. Thanks very much. Kara Swisher, always good to get her opinion on things. Um, Karen Feinerman, what, what did you make of what Kara had to say? Mm -hmm. And the notion that because Facebook has such a lock, I mean, it may not really make a difference in the end to its competitors. I think, I mean, I mean, do you remember what Cambridge Analytica was such a giant, I feel like it was much bigger than this, actually, mm -hmm. the scale of that. And Kara's right. I mean, she's been saying this for a long, long time, that Zuckerberg's going to do whatever he wants and that he can, not just because of his voting, but uh, because of the power of the platform. And it certainly makes me wonder, is it, if profitability and share price were to go down a lot, would that make him change his tune or that or he, he's just uh, sticking by it? I don't know. All that having been said, I'm a sort of, you know, um, detached investor, and I still think the platform is incredibly powerful, and I don't think the stock's expensive, so I'm staying long. Tim? Well, at uh, eight bucks a share on expected 2020, you're, you know, if you put a 30 multiple on it, everyone can do that math. Um, the stock's not expensive. It, it, you know, relative to itself, it is. Um, but but not relative to the size of the platform and the ability to monetize. And, and again, the under monetized assets in WhatsApp, Messenger and Instagram. So these are the things that we're not even really talking about tonight. And and these are the things that give this company a lot more room for upside. I, I have become more constructive on where the stock can trade, obviously, uh, over the last month or so, as I've seen the combination of the, uh, the, the ma management has made a choice, as we've just discussed. I won't go back into that. Um, that is probably constructive for the share price. It's, it's an apolitical comment, I hope. Um, it, it, it is something that we've seen in the past, and it's completely opposite of, of what they were doing four years ago.